this month was quite interesting. There's been a hell of a lot of progress this month. Uh, while the site preparation is has has been completed at the end of last month and then the start of this month, the block work was completed, the core fill block work for the ground floor. Um, that sort of forms part of the anchor, I guess, for the structure. Uh, that's been completed at the start of the month, but then in parallel, we've actually also uh, started manufacturing or started manufacturing the... Um, the floor cassettes, the wall cassettes, after all those meetings that happened the month previously, and then they were brought to site and we constructed the actual structure. So the structure went up in about three days on site with the cranes and so on. So all that planning and everything that, uh, that we went through in the previous months and leading up to this has actually come to fruition now and we have a structure up at the end of this month, uh, which was only a few days ago. Melbourne University has been involved with this project uh, from the start of planning, when we started looking at the structural engineering, uh, the design and so on. Uh, we basically looked at the embodied energy of the materials that are used in it, and that was the role of Dr. Robert Crawford. Um, he's assessing the embodied energy of the, the materials, and that helps us dictate which materials we use and in which, uh, I guess, assembly we use it in as well, and how we assemble the walls, etc. cetera. Um, so part of that, uh, Dr. Robert Crawford brought his students down from Melbourne University and had a presentation at the site. Um, with uh, Ty Hollingsby from GHD, who's a uh, principal engineer there, who basically worked on the mechanical engineering for the project. So uh, Ty Hollingsby and I presented the project to the students. I spoke about the philosophy of the project, how it's started to come to fruition, where the intents were, what I want from it in the end as well. And Ty spoke about the mechanical um, and environmental design aspects of the project. So we had, I think it would have been about 15, 15 or so students that were here. So I also went back to Druin, uh, Druin West Timber and Trust, and this time I was actually in the factory where they were assembling the wall panels uh, and the floor cassettes. I had to go back there with the plumbers and actually uh, construct the roof now the roof is a stainless steel roof. The reason we have the, a stainless steel roof, that's a custom roof, uh, is because it's going to sit under the deck where we've got the spa. The hot tub is going to be a chlorine-free hot tub, so chemical-free hot tub. Someone in the future might want to use chemicals in there, and if those chemicals spill onto that roof deck, it can eat through the colour bond and so on. So it has to be a stainless steel, so we've future-proofed it. Also part of that is the start of the air tightness barrier that we're going to be constructing the building within and the membrane that we're going to be cladding the building with. So I had to actually get in there and put the airtight barrier in before they can actually put the roof on because we won't have access to it once it's on site. So it's going to be uh, constructed in the factory to a point and then we're going to continue that um, air tightness barrier around the whole of the building once it's, once it's assembled on site. It, it was a big day sort of towards the end of this month uh, because all that work that was done in the factory now is delivered to site. Um, huge day had, uh, you know, butterflies in my stomach because we had the crew from Grand Designs here filming um, the installation. We had to get the semi-trailer down the laneway and back down the laneway and there's very, very little room. I think at one stage we measured there was something like 50 millimetres on each side of, of the truck mirrors, um, which were actually turned in uh, to, to get down the laneway. Um, so we had the crane in position the night before, uh, which was a bubble crane, and that was the crane that dictated what we could lift and what we couldn't and that dictated the size of the actual floor cassettes that we were building and the wall panels and so on, which 
also involved the weight of it. So that was crucial, I guess. Um, also, another part to it was I negotiated with the neighbours who have been fantastic with two different neighbours. Uh, one, we had to take a fence panel down so we could actually get the outriggers of the crane out to actually stabilise a crane. And we couldn't have done it without them letting us take that panel out. And they were very, very um, generous and uh, also very interested in what was going on. They brought their grandkids down to s watch the whole process. Um, and another neighbour actually let us use their yard, their driveway, as a staging point where we could lift the panels off the crane, which were on their sides, um, the floor cassettes, land it in their driveway, lay it flat, re-sling it, and then we could pick up that panel and drop it onto the block work, onto that first level. Which brought me to that first cassette, which um, which we allowed probably half a day. I I estimated we'd take two days to do this lift, and that was the plan for the lift. Um, long story short, it took uh, two and a half days to lift it, and it was this first panel that sort of really held us up. We put it on. What we were trying to do was transition um, from a 140 mil core fill block work to a 90 mil um, floor cassette and 90 mil uh, timber. Now, there's still rods coming up through that are tie rods that run through the whole building that uh, anchor everything down to the, the foundations. Um, there wasn't very much room to line those things up and it took us about two or three goes of taking it on and off to try and line it up and then uh, over the next few days, I actually had to bend some of these around and get them to where we needed to. So that first cassette took three quarters of a day. Um, and that's what sort of pushed us back a little bit. Um, over the next two days, we installed the other panels. There were a few teething problems as well. Um, uh, clearances, trying to get those tie rods through were quite tight. And this is sort of, in, I guess a new system. It wasn't designed uh, to that end degree, I guess. So that's why we needed to sort of take a little bit longer. But long and short of it, it was half a day longer than what we anticipated. So I think that's quite a success. Um, also on the second day, it took us a lot longer to bring the semi-trailer down. And it was quite interesting on the first day, there was a different crew member that was directing the truck driver and it took them 15 minutes to get down because they just clicked and they they got the uh, trailer down uh, within, you know, within 15 minutes. And on the second day, it was a different crew member um, that was here and it took 45 minutes to an hour or so to get that down. So we lost effectively an hour um, just bringing that uh, trailer down. So just those little things added up, but overall, for us to be, firstly, having the structure up in three days, unbelievable, and then um, and then also just running half a day over of our anticipated uh, lift times was pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, also, what was interesting was uh, within a day of that structure going up, scaffolding was put up. Um, around the building. So effectively the building was then wrapped up again. So we didn't really get a chance to see the whole structure of that building uh, for a long time. So it's it's sort of wrapped up now and we've got to finalise all the um, all the structural integrity in the building, lock off all the tie rods, tighten everything down and then also start cladding the building and so on. So that's our next stage now in the next month. Uh, trying to get all that done and the airtight envelope as well is going to be a major part.